I'm the optimist. I think it's important to focus on what the near-term symptoms are. Clearly, trade fits into that, etc. I think all of us would agree the economy is unbelievably strong, and that's what you see. I now see it from the startups around the world. And if you really look at the future of the economy, I think you're going to be based upon how startups do in this country, in India, in China, and in Europe. And it's interesting that many countries are moving ahead very rapidly, and that's really the focus of the book, is how do you get startups growing? Because that's where all job creation will occur, it's where innovation will occur, it's where inclusion will occur by geography and by gender, and it's also about the future GDP growth. So I would like to see our country be very aggressive on a startup agenda. David, we talked about it last time. We did, yeah. You've oh, been we, very strong on this point. I think surprisingly so to some, John, because you yeah. seem to indicate we really are far behind. It, it makes it hard. It, it's hard to imagine we could be far behind given Silicon Valley is still in the United States from what I remember. Yes, but it's only one of three major startup areas in our country. We're leaving behind the rest of the country. Startups this year, IPOs will probably be about 230 on the NASDAQ New York Stock Exchange. Carl, that sounds good versus last year. It's nowhere near the pace of the 1990s when we did four to 500 and a peak of 700 per year. So if you're looking at job creation in the future, it will be all from small companies. Digitization, Internet of Things, artificial intelligence will destroy jobs in the large companies. They will not add. So I think it's important that we don't lose track. Trade is very important. I'm actually the optimist. I think we'll work through this, including with China, and I've been in China for 35 years. Uh, I think we need to turn our focus on how do we get the startup nation going again. Last time, Sarah, we talked about the U.S. not even in the top 10 in innovation. What I try to do in that book is talk about disruption. And disruption can occur in a West Virginia. It can occur in a Boston 128. It can occur in Silicon Valley or the U.S. What gets you into trouble is when you don't change. So how do we become a startup nation again? And let's give ourselves poor marks, David, on where we are and realize countries like France are growing at five times the number of startups per year they were four years ago. India has a startup agenda. Let's get that back in the U.S. and make that a national priority. We'll talk more about that, John, but just come back to China for a moment, yes. given how often we discuss trade and your long experience there. And Cisco mm -hmm. is an important market for that company. Why are you, as so many others are, to be fair, optimistic, given what has only been increasing, not just rhetoric between the two countries, but uh, imposition of significant tariffs? Well, it's important to remember that I only talk for myself today in JC2 Ventures in terms of the positioning. Uh, I had the honor to get to know China in ways that very few people do. I've seen all these transitions. I've seen the movie so many times, Carl. <laughs> Mainframes to mini computers to PC to the Internet. Uh, I did the first joint venture in China with Wang Laboratories back in uh, late 1980s. Uh, we basically did a big bet on China in 1995. It was the first big bet I made as a CEO. Early on, the relationship between China and the U.S. was a very healthy but a win-win mentality with tough negotiations. The last 10 years, it's actually deteriorated. So I think it's important to get this back to a win-win scenario. It's in China's best interest to do that and the U.S. best interest. When it's in both countries' best interest, we will get there. Probably have to go through a little bit of pain. But I'm, I'm optimistic on this, and I think it's very practical as long as neither side uh, overreacts When you say to the get challenges. there, get where? Get to a uh, trade balance? Get to uh, promises to not steal technology? What is the there? Well, I think that's what a lot of the viewers question. You no, know, I think you, you've nailed the real issue, Carl. And Henry Kissinger, who I talk to regularly, and I miss Shimon Perez, who was my other confidant for almost 17 years. They had always remind me, John, what is the interest in both sides? Uh, I think it's very important as the U.S. put pressure on these countries to say, let's find a win-win relationship to say, what does there mean? In other words, once a country gets ready to move, whether it's North Korea, whether it's China, whether it's Canada, we have to be able to articulate, here's the win for us, and here's the win for you. And I think getting back to that win-win scenario is so important. I'm a huge believer in global trade. I think it increases standard of living around the world. But the U.S., I think, has to have a more fair trade position than we've had in the past.